people over here in the but studios. But such a great start in the, for the morning, you yes, know? Yes, exactly it is. But, you know, since I was saying that we've got a great bunch of people over here in the studios who totally relate to this yeah. phrase, which actually Shiza just mentioned, ladies and gentlemen. And for the very first time, they're going to introduce themselves as well. Yeah. Because we want people to know who they are from who they actually are. Yeah. So let's do it. On my right-hand side, we have been joined by... So, as alaikum. Good morning Good to morning. you guys. Uh, yeah, so I guess like, you know, with me, I've been in U.S. since like, uh, since high school. So I, I did my metric here. Okay. Uh -huh. But then uh, we, I, went, I moved to United States with my family mm. and did high school over there and the college over there. Uh, the very good thing about doing, uh, getting educated over here was the foundation it laid for mm. me. Yeah. When right. I went over there, I was doing the same algebra, math, and mm -hmm. everything that I used to do over here in right. fifth grade. So everybody started calling me smart. So while I was an average student over here, over there, I got this confidence. Okay. And it was all due to my background over mm, here in Pakistan. Right, right. And uh, that gave me the confidence to excel as I, I, as I went on. Uh, so basically, I did my bachelor's in uh, energy, uh, actually electrical engineering, and then okay. my master's in energy engineering. Wow. Yep. And uh, I've been working for Exelon for almost 10 years. Mm, okay. Exelon is the power, main power generation company over there. Mm. Uh, it's one of the many, but it's the biggest one. Okay. And uh, you can say it's similar to Wabda. Okay. And uh, uh, we got uh, distribution generation, all that sort of stuff. Oh. And uh, so I started as an engineer, okay. project manager, like where I was doing small projects. And then when I, I, I went on to become a business analyst, so okay. I got to know some business side of things. Uh, after that, uh, I actually went on to become uh, the manager of uh, strategy and planning. Hmm. So that was very interesting. I had uh, 20 people working under me, many of them engineers and uh, MBAs wow. and like many people related to do with finance. Hmm. So they gave me a little bit of insight on uh, on how the company works, how to manage a big group okay. because we had like many subcontractors as well. Uh, then right now, my current position, I recently changed over to become the project manager for the mega projects over there. Okay. So currently, I deal with many projects which are over a hundred million dollars, mm. and uh, it's a very. So you just keep growing. That's true. Cr that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I guess like you know, life is really all about growth. Mm, true. That's as true. As long as you keep growing, totally you'll stay satisfied. Yeah. If you stay in one place for too long, you kind of lose that passion. Yeah. That you that drives you. Exactly. Right. And also, like you know, I guess two years ago, I had. Uh, uh, two kids. Hmm. I mean, well, one kid two years ago and another kid <laughs> okay. one God, year. Not, 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 not all together. Yeah, in the didn't have two years. Sort of. yeah. uh, so, I mean, that actually drove me even further because hmm. I felt like, like it, it just opened up a new perspective for right. me. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wanted to do more. Hmm. And like you know, so so basically, I actually sort of disconnected myself from work a little bit. Okay. Uh, I we'll, we'll come back to that. Yes. You know, this, this is this sure. is get, getting way further. And do you realize now why we were not introducing them? <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. so, so, uh, we so have a lot to talk about. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's Faisal Saklan as well, very lucrative uh, curriculum vitae as well. You know, for all of what he has mentioned, we'll definitely talk about why they are here. But alongside Mr. Faisal, we have been joined by. Zabran Elias. So. Uh, Again, uh, my name is Jibran Elias. I was uh, born and raised in Karachi. I um, went to Chicago uh, when I was 14. Uh, wow. So I did my high school there, then undergrad, and then uh, master's um, from Northwestern University. Uh, so I currently work as a managing director uh, in the digital forensics uh, field. So yeah. for those of you who don't know what digital forensics is, it's basically forensics without the blood. So it's uh, the forensics of the computers mm. and any electronic device, iPhones, Android phones. So hardware is fine. Yes. Forensics the, of the hardware. The forensics of the hardware. Very nice. And <laughs> alongside Mr. Gibran, we've been joined by? Ali Komen. Uh, so I, uh, like Gibran, was also uh, born in Pakistan, in Hyderabad. Dado Sutto, sorry. Dado Sutto, Dado Sutto. And then I, I did my undergrad in Karachi, in Karachi and from a school called CBM. Uh, yeah. After that, I did a startup Great in school. Pakistan. Uh, I actually did a, a fashion startup. Okay. Uh, it failed uh, miserably. Uh, <laughs> but you learned. I, I learned a lot. I learned okay. a lot. Failure is the best teacher, for yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Uh, ended up moving to the U.S., did a startup over there as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Was somehow able to make it work. Okay. Ended perfect. up selling my startup, uh, went to school, did an MBA. And uh, right now, I'm basically, right after my MBA, I joined a tech company okay. it's called SAP. Uh, in my present role, I sell software and I'm a consultant uh, mm. working with Fortune 500 organizations, yeah. oh, wow. helping their CEOs and CIOs set the agenda for success in the future. Oh, wow, perfect. that's just great for all those people. They have missed out in their introductions or probably they were being very modest as well. So they work the top 500 fortune companies as well. Yeah. And I think that's a great deal for any Pakistani to know that, you know, Pakistanis are doing so well. Now, before we start yeah, anything, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just one thing, you know, 
You guys have been there for so long. Right. And you say that you dream of coming back to Pakistan. Why now? So I guess like, you know, like I said, life is all about growing, right? Yeah. So when you're young, you have the dream to becoming successful. Mm. Yeah. You want to succeed in life. You want to achieve something. We feel like we are at the place where we have achieved something. Okay. And now the greater responsibility at the next step back. that comes into is, is to give back. Mm, okay. And we feel like, you know, Pakistan has so much potential. Mm. We see the potential because we come back. We, right. we know we are from here. Right. And uh, it's, it's heartbreaking to see that we are not living up to that mm. potential. All right. There's so many opportunities here and we feel like we can be part of it. We can come back. We can help Pakistan and Pakistanis grow. Right, right. And that's very important to us. And for you? But what's so funny, I Mr. Think... Goodman, over here? You know, where, where Mr. Goodman keeps... I laugh smiling. a lot. I just, I, I like Faisal a lot, so I laugh <laughs> okay, a lot. Okay, that's just great. Yeah. Moving on to you. Tomorrow. So I, I think um, we saw that song, the Alamgir song. Yeah. So that's the song that I grew up listening to. Yeah. Okay. Karachi And actually, uh, in school, when they would have uh, the events, I would actually sing that song with other people. Wow. Oh. So basically, if uh, in short, I would I would love say, it in that accent now, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, in, in short, uh, you know, the promises that I made at that time, hmm. um, I want to live up to it. Wow. Cool. I made those promises without actually understanding the lyrics. Yeah. But now that <laughs> but I now do, you do, I even want to do it, it right. do it even more. So, oh. Mr. Ali Goodman, it's, it's going to be a bit different for you as well. Is it a coincidence that all three of you came down to Pakistan at the same time or you guys planned while you guys were in the U.S. and you were friends that, you know, we need to give back to the society, let's do it. And for how long have you guys been planning this? We not were friends. We are friends. So oh, it yeah. stays that yeah. way. Back uh, then, you were. <laughs> uh, we've been friends for five, uh, six years now, yeah. uh, okay. and I think we became friends while doing things for Pakistan, wow. okay. which okay. was really amazing as a bond to share among the three of us. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I actually started working with Faisal's uh, uh, sis, uh, wife's uh, 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 brother. brother. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, brother-in-law. <laughs> I was giving the whole description. <laughs> so I started working with his brother-in-law and Gibran yeah. uh, in, in terms of supporting the democratic process in Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. And that's an amazing bond that, that started our friendship. It's blossomed beyond that mm. since then. And it's been amazing to have these guys uh, with me. I think I would have never made it yeah. outside Pakistan if I didn't have confidants mm. like these in my life. Um, and as soon as you know, Gibran came to Pakistan to uh, become part of the elections, and we thought, why not? It's yeah. an amazing opportunity. He's been here before as well. I missed out during that time in 2013, but this time around, we definitely wanted to be here all together. Okay, wow, perfect. amazing! So, so it's it's a great amount of responsibility on yeah. your shoulders too, as well, because you guys are still, mm -hmm. you know, working for the organizations back mm -hmm. in the U.S. So taking off time and then coming back. Yeah. What's the purpose behind it? That you you guys are here, okay? You know, election campaigns. What for? You know, how do you think that an ordinary Pakistani is going to benefit mm -hmm. from you being a part of an election yeah. campaign? So I would say um, that, you know, when we're living abroad, um, like for, for me, I want every Pakistani living outside to have a very high self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I want the nation to have its dignity back, right? And basically what uh, I think if we can have um, you know, honest leadership, uh, and people are promoted on merit. And like Fessel said, we have so much talent. Uh, and if we can avoid the brain drain, and if we can keep the people motivated and give people ownership of the country, I think mag ma magic will happen. But how are you planning you on doing that? So, so the thing is, uh, you know, in our capacity, what we can do with our positions, uh, we can actually promote merit. Uh, we can actually become those leaders. So mm -hmm. rather than counting on other people, you know, I, I live by this quote that if it is to be, it is up to me. Hmm. Right. So the point is that if you don't come forward and yeah. you keep blaming the system and if you keep blaming the leadership, then you're basically the, the same cynic that, you know, our parents were. That hmm. we, we would sit in drawing rooms and crit criticize Pakistan. So our generation, I think, uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we're taking the ownership um, in our hands and we're saying, okay, well, you know what? We are going to become those leaders. Right. We're going to promote the merit. We're going to actually encourage. We're going to motivate the youth of Pakistan and we're going to make you know uh, make sure that this country becomes what it's uh, it was supposed to be. No, but, but I have okay. yeah, yeah sorry sorry it, it's in continuation. Yeah. You know people say these fancy things and yeah. uh -huh. I love it when they say it with mm. so much passion. Yeah. But how? How are you going to do it? So I will give you one example. Sure. You know uh, this is what I, we want. Yeah. Ali and I are part of this uh, very special group of uh, social media um, team of um, a political party okay. okay and uh, while so many other things are not in our control of the political party and we hmm. make a lot of mistakes but that one team you know it's uh, full of people like 13 year old to like you know 35 year old hmm. people yeah. 
and that team would make sure that merit is promoted. There is like a transition uh, period. There is, um, you know, we give back to the country, country not just the political mm -hmm. party, but because the political parties are just the means. Oh, the right. end goal is always Pakistan. Okay. Okay. So we make sure that we work for Pakistan, not, mm -hmm. not for a political party, and we use the political party as a platform, because right. mm -hmm. it is a big platform that you're provided. So we, anytime there is something, uh, you know, anything for AD, anything for Shokot Khanum, anything for any other philanthropic, any, mm. any other organizations that is doing good for Pakistan, we join in and you will see like our team just at the forefront leading, cool. uh, you know. Leading Can I give front. you a couple of other examples? Sure. Yes, yeah, sure. Because this one I'm, I'm very, very proud of. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, all of us have been mentoring people in our fields who are especially from Pakistan or, or, or trying in, in the U.S. Uh, recently I had somebody who's part of the uh, national outreach program at Lumps. Okay. Uh, he was originally from Juddo in Sindh. Okay. And he came to me and he emailed me on LinkedIn, just found my profile. Hmm. And uh, we worked together on his uh, 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 MBA application. And he got into Harvard. He completed oh, wow. Harvard. He's now uh, moving to Chicago hmm. uh, to pa join McKinsey as a consultant. Wow. This is my Brilliant. fourth person. Wow. And wow. Uh, before that, I had another guy who went to Harvard. Uh, who uh, reached out to me again, he, uh, not to say that I had much to do with mm. it, they had amazing profiles, yeah. but it's great to be part of mm. the, a group of people like this and just be somebody who can tell them, look, I was there, I can just tell you the process. I'm not yeah. giving you any talent. You have all this. This is what matters. In mm -hmm. yourself. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. We're, just, we're just giving you an example. Yeah. Now, but Mr. Ali, you know, let's just face it. You guys were a part of Brain Drain. And after so many years, when you're coming back to Pakistan and preaching it out to the youngsters that, you know, the best thing is to stay to work for Pakistan, why and how do you expect for them to understand this? I think we confuse physical proximity hmm for love and passion and patriotism. It's a huge, huge misnomer. No, but let's be honest, but since you're talking about physical proximity, if you're not in Pakistan, you are probably indirectly contributing to the economy, but not largely. Not at all. Mm. Uh, my brain does not work only for Pakistan when it is in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. My brain works for Pakistan when it's anywhere in the mm. world. Okay. Okay. My soul works for Pakistan, my, everything works mm. for Pakistan. <coughs> so in this digital age, for us to think that I cannot generate ideas mm. and execute ideas for Pakistan from anywhere in the world, yeah. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that we definitely need to correct. I think I'm going to agree to this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to agree to this one. Fair okay, enough. That's correct. So, so, so all three of you are working on the same projects? at the same particular point of time? Uh, not necessarily. We are working mm. on like different stuff. Like they're very what about passionate you then, about uh, social media and everything. My passion is regarding the education, especially for orphans. Okay. So I'm supporting that cause in, in many different ways. Uh, currently, like, you know, we have certain programs which are even in like, which we, we can support even in US. Mm. My eventual dream is to come back here, start sort of an orphan education like city mm. sort of way. Uh, but I mean, th while I'm working towards that goal, in the meanwhile, I'm also trying to actually get my fellow Pakistanis to look at the bright pers perspective wow. of Pakistan. Yeah, you know, like, which actually yes. brings me to ask you that since you uh, interact a lot with the elite class there, you have a VIP li living style there. So it's a responsibility on your shoulders to portray and to channel a better soft image of Pakistan. How are you doing that? So basically, like every time we go out there, uh, we are. We look Pakistani. We yeah. are Pakistani. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that we are Pakistani. <laughs> yeah, it's not that somebody's going to get confused. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, thing is, like, we we understand that, and we take the responsibility mm. on our shoulders. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we understand that, like, you know, every whatever we do is a representation of Pakistan. Right. So by being the best that we can be, by being, uh, like, I actually volunteer a lot with my work as okay. well. And uh, I'm actually very proud. I tell them that I'm a Pakistani. And you a lot of the be. time, yeah, yeah. religion comes into play as well. Yeah. And they, in the media, they always see this other side of things right, where right. they're seeing the extremist side. Yeah. And it's actually very much an eye opening for, the eye -opener mm. for them when I tell them, no, this is what Pakistan right. is about. We yeah. are just in, we want peace. We are in line with you. Uh, and uh, once they understand that, I feel like you know, their horizon opens up mm. a little bit. And uh, they're able to see things from our perspective. Right. And I mean, it's o overall, I guess we are the ambassadors. Well, of but I don't know why. I'm sorry to, um, that I'm bringing this up, but you know, the, the kind of people they are over there when you speak about religion and whatever is that all of this time when Hillary and Trump was campaigning, everybody was saying that we're going to go vote for Hillary, but eventually the results were different. So let's not go over there. But for you, I've got a very different question. It might be very difficult too as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you two minutes to think about it because we have to head out for a break. Sure. And that was that you mentioned that you need a political party's platform to disseminate whatever you want to do to achieve your goals. 
Now, for, for a thing which needs to be mentioned as philanthropic, I think that the person needs to be apolitical. Yeah. How, what are your thoughts about that? And do you think that you really do not need any political party's platform, rather make your own mm -hmm. and bring people onto it so that it's inclusive, so that you know it's for everyone out there? Because people over here have issues with people representing political parties. Sure. We're going for a short break, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Good morning. Good morning. Amazing young people. <laughs> Welcome to World This Morning. We're having a great Friday morning with these very energetic Pakistani expats that we have on our show. And we're talking about how patriotic they are in bringing back and serving their nation. Exactly. And before going to a break, Shazad actually asked a question to Mr. Gibran. And are you ready for the answer? I'm very ready for <laughs> the answer. Let's do it. So I'll tell you, um, need, is, need is not the word. I think uh, it, it helps. Um, having that platform acts as a catalyst. Um, so I think um, one example that I would give uh, is that even when I was in high school, I was volunteering for organizations like Zindagi Trust, DCF, uh, HDF, and countless other uh, organizations that were working here. And I saw what I concluded was that the process was slower than what I wanted to be. Okay. I do want to see change in my lifetime. And I, I did um, you know, uh, read a lot of books on uh, how the mass change comes. So my, my conclusion was that uh, if a political party when they come in the government and they uh, take those initiatives they mm. replicate the models of those uh, uh, organizations um, because of the political will uh, then the change can come faster and I do have a, a very good example um, there is um, an IT board of a province uh, that I also um, uh, advise uh, on and I do see that digital forensics is now a curriculum there mm. yeah. they've uh, started like early age uh, programming uh, so people that are who are like uh, children that are 10 years old 11 year olds they're getting into programming and they're becoming masters so by the age of 16 they're like wanted by these top firms like Microsoft Facebook um, and Google okay. so so my point is that when a government initiates something it, it goes on a very mass level and and that that's where you can make a lot of uh, difference really fast so my big motivation I do want to cha see change in my lifetime uh, so you can call it shortcut or you can so call it, it all comes strategy. down to political will right yes yeah. so and I think it is very important to cater to the masses too as well but individually speaking I don't think that it w I mean it's my opinion. It's not necessary that you need to relate to that. 
But I think that over here within Pakistan, people are so into politics and which party, which leader, mm. what to do, what not yeah. do. It's, it's somebody narrated an example. That was that, you know, there are like 15,000, you know, tea cafes probably all around Islamabad or <laughs> Pakistan as well. So the poor champ knows that, you know, okay, whether anybody needs to be the prime minister or whosoever, but that poor champ does not know how to make a cup of tea. Right. So, you know, this, this, is, this is the kind of scenario we face over here in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But moving on to you, Ali, now you mentioned while we were on break that, you know, you want to give away the, the real tips, for example, the procedures, made examples, make people aware that, okay, if they can do it, you can do it too as well. So how are you planning on doing that? Because it needs a massive level or probably, you know, some amazing social media yeah. campaigns or print campaigns or things like that. How do we do that then? I don't think you can do this with one campaign or the other. Uh, that's probably not, what, well, not how it happens. I used to have, uh, in my university, there were a lot of people from Israel because Israel has a great relationship with the U.S. Yeah. and they stick together. They help each other out. Do you know Even how the many... Even tickets go to... Yeah, <laughs> no, right. you, can, you can disagree with it. Yeah. You can di I'm, I'm, not talking, I'm not talking politics. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'm saying the number of technology startups in Israel that are supported by people who come to the U.S. Mm. and who give back to their country is so big, we can barely fathom it. Wow. Once you come to a different country and you bring your roots with you, you bring a desire to actually bring change, and you educate people on how to get to, get to greener pastures, yeah. that's how you build inroads. Exactly. So you can, we can talk, about, uh, we can talk uh, about whatever country you want and whatever political way we have, but if we have a real desire to incorporate the professionals from the countries that, that we are from, we will get, make it mm. happen. Right. Even India is making a huge name for itself when it comes to CEOs in the US. Yeah. Mm. You get there after years and years of people have made their inroads and gotten to this level. Then the next generation gets to this level. Then the next generation gets to this level. Right. Exactly. That's how you get to the top. It's not a one social media campaign exactly. mm. that yeah. gets you right. up there. Yeah, that's just great. It takes time, of course. Mm. You know, but uh, Mr. Faisal, you know, we have talked about fundraisers and everything that you're planning to do. But let's talk about the real thing. You are the in charge of maximizing electricity, uh, in, you know, um, efficiency. Right. Do you realize how important that is in Pakistan? So should we be expecting <laughs> your practices and Inputs. your expertise, yeah. expertise especially, to be implemented in Pakistan in the future? Uh, definitely. I mean, right now the world is going towards renewable energy. Yeah. Yeah. And solar is a big Ooh. part of it. Uh, it's getting cheaper every year. Right now, U.S., which, whose solar index is much worse than Pakistan, they are actually diverting their efforts towards this. Mm. Coal and all this, even nuclear, they're all getting more expensive okay. relatively. So I mean, the thing is, Pakistan has a huge potential mm. uh, in solar and a lot of other renewable. Right. We are like really rich in this. And I think like one of the biggest uh, issues with Pakistan is our grid is not to the level. Okay. Our grid, like we have many times, people think that, oh, there is no power. We do have the power, mm. it's just not being distributed right. Mm. Okay. Our transmission system needs a massive overhaul. Mm. Uh, we need like a uh, smart grid, we need to stop electricity theft, and we have very good programs, uh, like in my company, to stop that from happening. I, yeah. it's, it's actually not that hard to do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, thing is, through these guys, like, you know, I'm actually trying to approach some of these, uh, uh, like, you know, people in Pakistan, trying to lend them my mm -hmm. support and like my, uh, whatever, the, all the knowledge that I have to contribute in some way. Right. So right. that's that's also a passion of mine of and course, I think yeah. there's a great future. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't I, I think like within the next ten to twenty years, I see Pakistan becoming a power in when it comes to energy and inshallah, energy. inshallah. Of I mean, we want, we, God willing we want <laughs> to think like this as well. But you know I'm sorry that I have to share this as well. So now you know we need to be in pace with how the world's moving. Yeah. But we're not, unfortunately. So now people have actually come up with meters which are which can be connected with Wi-Fi and you okay. know your daily consumption of electricity, water, mm. and whatever bills you have to pay. So imagine where we might be. Mm. But let's just leave that aside. Right. We, 10, 20 years, we'll talk then. <laughs> now, what I want to ask is that this is one ordinary every household question, and that is that put the, you know, you've made it so far, you've, you've done so great in life, and now are you stupid that you want to come back to Pakistan? Yeah. I've seen quite a lot of parents do that. What's your take on this one individually? Let's start from you, Ali. I think it comes from a very genuine place where parents think that you should really look after yourself because they want you to be well. Yeah. They think that if you diversify your attention, you will end up somehow hurting your own interests. Yeah. But you just have to put it in that context and tell them, look, I'm and uh, sometimes sometimes you just have to do a well left on it because yeah. uh, because you know sometimes this time around my dad was talking to me about coming to pakistan and he was like why are you coming 
and I told him relatively different reasons uh, <laughs> as I did. You made your way through. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I had five reasons. I just yeah. told him three and not two. <laughs> okay. okay. So you just have to make sure that you understand where your parents are coming from. You mm -hmm. respect it and uh, you don't give them a lot to worry about. Okay. No, but what do you tell them then? I mean, there are a lot of parents listening to you right now that whether they should be saying this or actually they should know about the, how secure their son or daughter is so far and that's why they might be taking this leap of faith. Yeah. I think you, you definitely have to have an sense of comfort about how practical and how stable you are yeah. as a human being yes. because again as I said parents to see you doing different things they think that you'll just mess up everything yeah. <laughs> they want stability and they want you yeah. to make sure that you exactly. keep going so please, upwards <laughs> over and over again or probably I think what we can do is share like I mean all of those points from within that particular section of information which you think are very relative for your parents yeah. and that's <laughs> what about you so so I work in uh, cyber security yeah. which is like a very growing field you, you know uh, so in within cyber security I, I do digital forensics so in US I've had a lot of success I work for a company where I got to speak at global conferences I got to teach United States Secret Service uh, for forensics um, so n here um, I think that the market is very ripe for that business so I think explaining that part that hey if you get to be a starter in in a country like Pakistan where there's so much youth yeah. where we can create so many jobs in digital forensics and actually uh, create an impact you know more and more of our data is becoming digitalized right yeah. so more as as the data goes uh, in the cloud and it becomes digital there's uh, more risk so you need to actually mitigate that risk and for that there's going to be so many jobs so if you get to be part of something so special where you get to uh, give jobs to uh, your countrymen I think that's that's the kind of greater uh, satisfaction right. that beautiful. I think if you can explain it to your parents, that is uh, what beautiful. We need. What beautiful about you, you're right. Yeah. So I I think it's sort of a mix of bo what both of these guys said. Uh, like you know, parents obviously have genuine concerns for our well-being, but I guess once they understand your passion, uh, then they they you can it's easy to get them on, on board. So similar similar to that, like you know, my parents and uh, uh, my family they understand that this is my passion mm. and they also have the love of Pakistan in their heart mm. and I actually show them the good side of things right. like you know so recently like you know I actually just got here yesterday uh, there were some unfortunate events in Pakistan recently so they, yeah. every, I'm getting calls from the relatives and the parents hey uh, why, are you, why are you going like mm. you know maybe you should delay <laughs> your plan or something but here's the thing these are the times when your country needs you the most yeah. uh, we have a very crucial event coming up like next week and uh, right now, if we won't be able to contribute, when will, will we? Yeah. That's true. So, I mean, is my family understands that. And I mean, like, it's a, it's a process, right? Like, I've been preparing my wife. Okay, if you, <laughs> if you oh go to Pakistan, God. you'll have help. <laughs> this is the bright side yeah. of things.